Good morning, everyone. Um, so we are going to resume our uh, daily uh, weekday um, practice and study. Mm. So basically, uh, two parts to uh, our daily program. Uh, first part is a short practice, and then followed by um, uh, a study uh, section to this. Mm, so uh, some of you may or may not have uh, the practice text that we use. So if somebody can share in this chat here uh, as one way to get this, uh, these texts. So it will be the uh, daily brief opening and dedication prayer text. And then for today is the Archie cleansing offering called abundantly bestowing uh, all that is desired. Mm. So these are the two texts. Um, also, um, if you want to stay informed and connected uh, to the things that I do, there is a WhatsApp group called uh, Dr. Lai's programs. Um, I don't know if somebody here who knows how to give people uh, that information, please also put it on the chat on how they can join that. There might be an invitation link or something like that uh, to join that, uh, Dr. Lai's programs. Uh, this is a list separate from the list that we use for people who participate on a regular basis of the Wednesday night Digong Dhamma Kirti Sangha. Digong Dhamma Kirti Sangha uh, is uh, a group of practitioners that make a commitment together every Wednesday night. Well, in the case of Asia, it will be Thursday morning, uh, but makes a commitment and able to meet the commitment of meeting uh, regularly on this Wednesday night. Uh, that's the Dribbung Dhamma Kirti Sangha. And so there uh, is a WhatsApp group for that. We're trying to uh, kind of mm, mm, clear things up a little bit and so that um, we keep that uh, particular WhatsApp group specific to people who, who are committed to that Wednesday night. And then, of course, the larger program, so to say, of what I do. Mm. As some of you know, uh, this time when His Holiness came to Asheville, uh, he has in particular given me a task, given us a task uh, overall mm, in terms of focus for our practice. Uh, he has um, given us the uh, responsibility of keeping one particular uh, practice uh, alive 
uh, among us, um, which is called the profound path for accomplishing the Guru. So Dugong Dhammakirti, in terms of uh, a specific set of practices, uh, will be uh, I will be uh, teaching more and more uh, that particular set of practices. So this other WhatsApp group, uh, Dr. Lai's programs, um, will will let you know uh, what what's going on, uh, but uh, will not um, overload you with uh, things that are not. Uh, particularly relevant to you. So if you want to just stay informed, stay connected, and to know uh, this and that that I'm doing, please sign up for uh, the Dr. Lai's programs. And I believe uh, Omar has just provided that uh, link in the chat. So anyway, uh, let us now begin uh, with the opening recitation. O Mother, sentient beings, limitless as the sky, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and all-knowingness, may they experience happiness and be separated from suffering. I will quickly establish them in the state of the most perfect and precious Bodhi, O oh Mother, sentient beings, limitless as the sky, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and all-knowingness. May they experience happiness and be separated from suffering. I will quickly establish them in the state of the most perfect and precious body, O oh, Mother, sentient beings, limitless as the sky, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and all-knowingness, may they experience happiness and be separated from suffering. I will quickly establish them in the state of the most perfect and precious body. Thus, until I achieve Buddha, I engage in virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind until death. I engage in virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind from now until this time tomorrow. I engage in virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. In the Buddha Dharma and Sangha, most excellent, I take refuge until Bodhi is reached. By the merit of generosity and other perfections, may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all wandering beings. In the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, most excellent, I take refuge until Bodhi is reached. By the merit of generosity and other perfections, may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all wandering beings in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, most excellent, I take refuge until Bodhi is reached. By the merit of generosity and other perfections, may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all wandering beings. May all mother sentient beings, limitless as the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free from the bias of attachment and aversion. May all mothers, sentient beings, 
Limitless as the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering, and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free from the bias of attachment. An aversion. May all mother sentient beings, limitless as the sky, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the happiness that is free from. Sorrow may they rest in equanimity, free from the bias of attachment and aversion. Lord Vajradhara Dilipa Naropa Marpa Milarepa Gampopa Pamodrupa Jigden Sumgan Venerable Root Guru possessing the three kindnesses. Root and lineage gurus, idams, dharma, palas, pray, please bestow blessings on mine, mind stream. An equal refuge, ornament of the world, whose renown pervades three thousand worlds, the undisputed conqueror Vajadhara, I pay homage to you, the father Jig Dengumbu. You alone are continually on my mind, compassionate one. Please grant your blessings, dispel the darkness of my mind. Please bless me to realize the mind free from elaborations. On the northwest border of the land of Udiana, in the heart of a lotus flower, endowed with the most marvelous attainments, you are renowned as lotus-born, surrounded by many hosts of Takinis following in your footsteps. I pray to you, come inspire me with your blessings, Guru Bhima. Siddhi Hung in the Dharma Datu Palace of Akarnishta is the essence of the Buddhas of the three times who directly reveals my mind as Dharma Kaya Orun Guru at your feet I supplicate. And now, uh, please turn to the Achi uh, cleansing offering text. Yogini instantaneously above my head is protector of three worlds, Rana Sri abiding naturally as a Nirmana Kaya from the bomb seeds syllable in my heart, Amani Ram Yam Kam that purify all the impurities and stains of the offering substances and the syllables, Om Ahum. Emanate, which transform the immaculate essence of the offering substances into the nature of the elixir of primordial wisdom, turning then into substances that are agreeable to each of the types, entirely filling the limitless three thousand fold universe. Oh. Om ha hum, Om ha hum, Om ha hum, Namah Sarvatatag. 
Gate Bhayo Bisha Mukhe Vyasar Vata Ka Ungate Saparana Hemanga Gana Kang Soham Nama Sarva Tata Gate Bhayo Bisha Mukhe Vyasar Vata Ka Ungate Saparana Hemanga Gana Kang Soham Nama Sarva Tata Gate Bhayo Bisha Mukhe Vyasarva Taka Ungate Saparana Hemanga Gana Kang Soha From the innate nature that is spontaneously present since the beginning, I invite and request the protectors of the teaching to come to this birthless, perfectly luminous secret mandala, your dark inis who magically appear from the activity of primordial wisdom, supreme guardians who abide by the command and oath. Manifest magical forms from the Dharma Da to worldly and primordial wisdom, emanations and retinue with your hearts of Mayas roused. Please come into form from the expanse of the excellent airs or space. A blaze with turquoise light, specifically from the azure crag of Mule at Turdum, great elder sister Achinhan Hangsa. Please come here to tame the enemies and obstruct the magical apparitions of elusive forms emerging from the sphere of primordial wisdom. Other deities, exalted activities, wisdom, samaya, and magnetizing guardians of the congress teachings, each according to their own time. Retinues of pacification, enrichment, magnetization, and destruction, cries of longing, yogins, calling out like a dragon's roar with welcoming substances, silk ribbons, and hands beckoning. I bring forth offering clouds of cleansing smoke and ocean of elixir due to your samayas come here to this place of Unsolid Samaya Samaja Ja Hong Ham Ho Ala La Ho Ehe He Bhagavan Akarsaya Samaya Ja Lady of Space, along with your entire retinue, please be seated happily, each according to your like. I bring forth oceans of offering clouds, both physical and visualized. With devotion, I praise and pay homage with body, speech, and mind. Here now at this place and in this supreme year, at this excellent juncture when the planets and stars and favorable positions with the aspiration prayers of all majestic 
for destroying Buddhas, for the exhaustion of the generative factors, may I achieve in its entirety the true meaning of this life. As I make this cleansing offering to you, deities now let go, demons, mishaps, and obstructors disperse to their own abodes. Cleanse and purify your obscurations and impurities. Give with various supreme medicines that clear the afflictive emotions, fine seals, jewels, incense, aloes, wood, sandalwood, cedar, wood, fragrant fir, juniper, dwarf, rhododendron, birch, and so on. All these types of fragrant and ambrosia woods. Flour, butter, milk, and various types of food and drink. We make these all clouds of pervading smoke of this cleansing offering for you, glorious root and lineage guru. For you, Edam Vajra Yogini, along with retinue, we cleanse for you, protectors of the teachings, chief lady of space, Joki Droma. For you, exalted activities, Dakini, wisdom, Dakini, Samaya, Dakini, and magnetizing, Dakini. And for you, the three goddesses who devour, slay, and snatch away, we thank our shaking mother and raise her to the life force, wrathful red mother of exalted activities, along with red to new. Along with all your assemblies of thousands of dark red flesh eaters, for all you matricas and dakinis, without exception, we cleanse for you the powerful lady Tashi sitting of the supreme crystal tresses of the Himalaya, for you the goddesses of the four families, the five sister consort and retinue. And you, twelve tenmas, along with your retinue, we cleanse so that the Gove gods and the multitude of family guardians, the guardians of the precious teachings of the Gaju and oceans of sworn guardians, protect us, this Samaya keeping yogins. We offer this cleansing as this touches the deities and us, the evil of defilements from Samaya breaches. Defilements from violations of vows, quarrels, filth, and demons, those coming from contact with corpses, rape, incest, infidelity, and fouling of hearts, all these foul defects are cleansed and with us become pure. In this way, with this profound ritual of bathing and cleansing smoke, the guardian deities of pleas, violations, and breaches are mended. All obstructive and discordant conditions are quelled, and all our wishes that accord with the Dharma are abundantly accomplished. Care now with lofty praises to the guardian deities. Glory to Joki Dharma with these outer, inner, and secret support substances. Glory to Joki Dharma. With these various desirable offering clouds, glory to Joki Doma. With music of devotional songs of praise, glory to Joki Doma. With mantras, mudras, and samadhi, glory to Joki Doma. Superior to the pinnacle of cyclic existence, glory to Joki Doma. Brighter than the sun and moon, glory to Joki Doma. Good as with fulfilling jewels. Glory to Choki Doma, full like a summer lay. Glory to Choki Doma, to spread the never waning teachings of Buddhas. Glory to Choki Doma, to guard and fulfill the ultimate accomplishment of disciples. Glory to Choki Doma, may the guardians and humans not be separated. All the excellent glories, wealth, power, and Blessings of the animate and inanimate, of the environment and inhabitants in samsara and nirvana. I now bring together these enriching presences, prosperous, fortune filling like a lotus. By the great might of all your guardians, guard the jewel of the essence teachings, increase, develop, and stabilize the whole of this. Of the teachings for us who are unerring and our retinue increase auspiciousness and resources in our abodes. 
And when we are away, repel all bandits and hostile forces, dispel darkness, dispel harmful gossips and laws now and in the time to come. Spontaneously bring about all these benefits. Om Bajra Sato Samaya Manupalaya Bajra Sato Tenopalaya Mahasamaya Sado This is Sanjay Guru Rinpoche Ngodri Kundra Adar Vachin Vaisham Pache Kutsa Dutra Dambu Sa Sova De Sojin Jira Dutra Sojin Akamu Vachin Shiva Sapa Lungi Dupra Dutra 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 So what the so ginger love the so gin on some way by Jesu and on some ballon get the bridge and ginger love the so ginger and watching pressure. But you can say the double so what the so ginger love the so gin on some way by Jesu and on some ballon get the bridge and ginger love the so 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 what I was reciting is on page 9 of the opening um, recitations, which is the supplication to Guru Rinpoche for removing obstacles and fulfilling wishes. So now in English, Guru Rinpoche, Buddha of the three times, great bliss, source of all Siddhis, wrathful subduer of Maras, who removes all obstacles. Grant your blessings, we pray through them. May all obstacles out in it and secret be quelled, and may all our aspirations be fulfilled. <clears throat> Sublime, precious, venerable, and glorious, rude and lineage gurus, assembly of idam deities, buddhas, and bodhisattvas dwelling in the ten directions, and all assemblies of viras, viranis, yoginis, and dakinis, please heed me by may the virtues collected in the three times by me and the entirety of samsara and nirvana. And the inherent root of virtue not result in the eight worldly dharmas, the four causes of samsara, and the resultant states of hearers and solitary realizers. And on may all mother sentient beings limitless as the sky. Particularly those enemies who hate us, obstruct us, who harm those who create obstacles, maras who mislead, and their mara retinues have happiness, be separated from suffering, and quickly attain the unsurpassed perfect and precious body by the power of this vast root of virtue. May we benefit sentient beings with body, speech, and mind. May the afflictive thoughts of attachment, aversion, ignorance, pride, and jealousy not arise in my mind stream. May thoughts of name, fame, gain, respect, and so forth in this life not arise for even a moment with my mind stream, moistened by love, compassion, and bodhicitta. May I come under the care of virtuous spiritual friends and having become as limitless as space, may I achieve the supreme attainment of Mahamudra in this very life. 
by the virtues collected in the three times by me and the entirety of samsara and nirvana and by the innate root of virtue may i and all sentient beings quickly attain the unsurpassed perfect complete precious body So, for the study part uh, of uh, this daily uh, group, um, the last time we met, we started a series on the life and liberation stories of the uh, Golden Rosary lineage, uh, referring to the Gagyu lineage holders. Um, I think we'll take a pause from that. Uh, in fact, we're in the process of finishing uh, that book and having it published, actually. <clears throat> so maybe when it's published, you know, we can return to it. Instead, I think uh, now perhaps it's a good time uh, to turn to this book called The Great Dragong Teachings uh, to the Assembly. So the great Rigong teachings to the assembly. Uh, let's see. Oh. <laughs> Coming in and out of focus. <laughs> the great Rigong, Rigong teachings to the assembly. <clears throat> um, some of us started uh, this book um, in the context of attending a uh, retreat. We spend about a little less than a week uh, right when people were able to travel from the pandemic, <laughs> impose uh, quarantines and all of that. Uh, a group of us bravely, foolishly, you know, hop on the plane and went to Costa Rica. And uh, I think at that point we were all so excited, you know, to be able to go we just, you know, didn't think anything. Uh, thankfully, uh, gratefully, everyone was fine. And we went to Costa Rica, and I think we had a good retreat there. And then we thought, even I thought, that uh, we will be able to do this retreat uh, in the next five years, every year meeting, uh, to finish the whole book. So we covered like six uh, of the 30 teachings that are in this book. Mm. Um, but uh, the second one, second of these retreats, uh, which we actually planned and got close to doing it, it was supposed to be in Peru. And then there was political unrest in Peru. Uh, then that went away. And yada, 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 um, not sure when we'll be able to <laughs> gather to do uh, that uh, in that format. So then I thought mm, maybe better, you know, to continue or to start yeah, uh, with the daily uh, study and to go over uh, this book. So there's a group of translators under the guidance of Kenjin Nima uh, uh in Germany uh, that has been uh, diligently uh, working on translating Jigden mm -hmm. especially, uh, not, not exclusively limited to, but especially uh, the teachings of Jigden uh, translating those teachings into English. Uh, and German, uh, in some cases yeah, also Russian, uh, and I think also starting to do in Spanish. There's one person in Chile uh, 
who is uh, also uh, involved in that project. Uh, so uh, one of the results of that group is the publishing of this book called The Great Drigong Teachings to the Assembly. So teachings to the assembly, uh, Sokchu in Tibetan, is a particular genre um, of uh, collected teachings, a particular genre of collected teachings, uh, particularly found among uh, the disciples of Gampopa, uh, the spiritual descendants of Gampopa in the early Kagyu form formative period. Uh, the title suggests that what these teachings are is that they are teachings given uh, to an assembly of disciples. So you say, so then what is this in contrast to? It is in contrast to the many, many, many other teachings that are given extemporaneously uh, to one disciple uh, or a handful of disciples uh, or uh, brief notes and letters uh, that a lama, a guru uh, might send uh, to a disciple in response to questions that they have. So, for example, in the 12 volume collection of Jigen Sumgen's teachings, uh, most of them are of that nature. Uh, a disciple sends a letter with questions, uh, then Kyoba Rinpoche might dictate and someone writes it down and sends it back. Or Kyoba Rinpoche might write a response and send it back. Uh, or during consultation hours, so to say, uh, Certain disciples might come and ask questions. And then his attendant, uh, usually it was uh, Shirap Chungne, uh, then his attendants uh, might, um, you know, listen and then quickly jot down, uh, and then it gets uh, collected, you know, later on, and published uh, as the teachings of uh, the Lama. Um, so majority uh, of the teachings are of this type. But then within this, uh, this, this uh, collection of teachings, uh, there is then one genre called teachings to the assembly, Sokcha. Mm -hmm. So from that, I think what we can gather is, whereas those uh, teachings given to individual disciples, to a handful of disciples, teachings given in response to questions uh, presented. Those teachings, I think when we read them, we need to be a little more aware of uh, the context in which they were given. Uh, meaning that perhaps this instruction mm, is specific to this disciple, right? Not that we can't draw uh, lessons from that particular teaching, but when we uh, draw lessons from that teaching, we should be at least a little bit aware that uh, this could be something specific to what that student needed to hear and what that student needed to hear. Whereas, in contrast, teachings to the assembly, you could say, uh, Gyobar Rinpoche was quite aware that he is addressing a uh, hundred disciples or two hundred or ten thousand. And because he was teaching to the assembly, then what he said, uh, generally applicable uh, to everyone. So in that sense, you know, this genre of teachings to the assembly uh, have uh, a, a wider coverage, as we would say. And so I think that's, you know, uh, something that we should keep in mind. In this particular collection, so uh, in the introduction in this book, um, which uh, 
Kenjin Nima Gyozen wrote this. He says that uh, what we have, yeah, um, what we currently have in the collection of Gyoba Rinpoche's uh, teachings are basically uh, we have 10 titles that have the name teachings to the assembly. Ten titles. In which this one is a particular, this is called uh, the great teaching to the assembly or the wish-fulfilling jewel, well-formulated sections of the teachings to the assembly. So in this particular collection, uh, there are 30 teachings. So I believe that these 30 teachings were given over a period of a month, uh, every day, uh, it was given. And you could see from teaching to teaching references to uh, the later teachings saying, you know, like, a few days ago, I said this, this, this. And so there's internal evidence that these 30 teachings were probably given over a period of a month. And so there's this kind of continuity. But it's also obvious that these 30 teachings weren't like uh, planned out, you know. It's not like lesson plan, a teacher would write out all the notes. and It's also quite clear that these were given from the heart, extemporaneously. So don't expect the 30 teachings to be like some of the other Tibetan teachings that you are familiar with, where it's a treatise, a treatise that was like written out and you know, follows a particular logic, flows in a particular way, uh, not in this set of 30 teachings. Okay? In this set of 30 teachings, I think each day, you know, Kyoba uh, would uh, ascend the teaching throne, and look out into the audience, and he starts teaching. So some of the teachings are short, some of the teachings are longer. So overall. So anyway, mm -hmm. This collection uh, was put together not by Sherab Jungne, uh, who is usually the disciple uh, who, who, collect, uh, who collected, uh, normally most of the teachings seem to have been collected by Sherab Jungne. In this case, this was uh, something uh, that was collected, uh, put together by uh, Drakpa Jungne. Uh, so Sherab Jungne and Drakpa Jungne were considered in their lifetimes to be kind of, you could say, the sun and moon disciples of Kyoba Rinpoche. And there was a number of other very important disciples, such as there is like these, uh, I forgot what they're called, but there are these three disciples uh, in which uh, the original kind of uh, Lama that now well, we uh, have Gachen Rinpoche. Uh, so there was a Gar uh, who was a student of Kyoba Rinpoche. He was one of them. Then Nyo, uh, Nyo Gyawa Lanangpa uh, was another one of them. Uh, he was the one who then started some monasteries in Bhutan. Uh, and then there's another figure uh, called Druptup uh, Senge uh, Yeshe. Who uh, kind of um, focus his teaching activity uh, in Western Tibet uh, on the borders of what's now Tibet and uh, Nepal uh, in the Dopo region uh, to some degree the Limi region uh, in Western Tibet. Mm. 
So here, Dagpa uh, Jungne was the one who uh, gathered uh, this this collection. Dagpa Jungne was also the disciple that Jigden Sungen sent to Jigden Sungen's teacher's monastery, uh, Pakdu Densatil, uh, to restore Pakdu Densatil. Uh, Jigden Sungen's own teacher's monastery uh, greatly declined after Pamodrupa passed away. Uh, initially, some disciples uh, asked Jigden Sungen to uh, help that community, uh, but um, he wasn't able to, and so he left. And especially after he left, uh, that monastery really declined. Then later in life, when Jigden Simgun became a great Lama, then again, uh, his fellow disciples and people in the Pagdu and Satil area came to Jigden Simgun and pled, uh, pleaded, rather pleaded with him, and say, "Please, you know, you have to restore uh, your teacher's monastery." And so then he sent Dragpa uh, Jungne. Dragpa Jungne very successfully uh, rebuilt that monastery uh, and made it one of the most active and wealthy uh, monasteries also uh, in in their time. Then later uh, he came back to Dragon and anchored uh, the throne of Dragon. I think he's the fourth successor after Jigden Sumgun. Uh, the immediate successor to the throne of Jigen Sungen was Kenjin uh, uh, Dorje, I think, uh, who Trisap uh, Rinpoche uh, is, is the reincarnation of that Lama, uh, Gurawa. Uh, he was a uh, Gura family, Gurawa Sutum Dorje. Uh, and then one of Jigen Sungen's nephew, uh, I think Onchen, Sonam Dagba uh, succeeded uh, this Kenjin, and then the next one uh, was, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, was Dragpa Jungne. Uh, and Dragpa Jungne was not just a great Lama, he appeared to have been also a very able statesman. Uh, he, when he ascended the throne, he also sort of effectively became uh, the political head of that area. And when the Mongols were coming, and threatening uh, Dugong, Dugong area. Uh, he was able to hold them back. Uh, he was able to get their respect. And so the Mongols left uh, Dugong uh, alone and then burn it to the ground. Mm. Later in 1290, the Mongols did come and burn Dugong to the ground. <laughs> For a few hundred years, you know, starting around 1200s, you know, when the Mongols were active all over Asia, you know, conquered China and then <laughs> went all the way to Europe. For those few hundred years, the Mongols were greatly feared all across Asia. Mm, and including in Tibet, they were very busy uh, marching up and down, left and right, all over Tibet. Mm, and then the Tibetans uh, uh, aligned themselves, uh, different groups aligned themselves with different Mongols. And so that added to the complication uh, of the Mongol uh, activity, <laughs> so to say, in Tibet. So anyway, uh, this is compiled by Drapa Um So here I'm reading from the book now. This is the introduction to this collection on page 22. Uh, it opens with an opening praise to Kyobajik and Sumgan. Uh, now this praise then is written by Drapa Jungne. So he says here, His inconceivable body mandala is beautiful, like a mountain of jewels, and has the major and minor marks from the perfection of the two accumulations. It manifests in accordance with the dispositions of beings that are as limitless as space. And so praising Jigden Sumgen's exalted form body, Dragpa uh, Jungne basically says he has the form of a Buddha because he says he has the major and minor marks, the 32 major marks and the 80 minor marks. So, of course, in the context of writing praises to one's guru, uh, it is fashionable. To some degree, you could say it is acceptable uh, to kind of perceive your guru uh, 
Uh, or even in Vajrayana, you are encouraged to perceive your Guru as a perfect Buddha. And then so from there, uh, you write uh, and saying that your Guru has the form of a perfect Buddha, 32 major marks, 80 minor marks, right? Uh, it's not so controversial. Uh, this is part of the method of Guru devotion. But in this case, we also know uh, many of Gilbert Rinpoche's disciples not just like uh, practice perceiving uh, their guru uh, as Buddha, uh, they actually believed uh, and saw their guru as Buddha. And so we have statues of Jigden Sungun made during this early period, uh, whereby, for example, one of the signs, uh, one of the major marks uh, of a Buddha is that on the palms of their hands and on the soles of their feet, uh, there is Dharma Chakra, and somehow birthmarks uh, that look like the Dharma Chakra. Yeah, so it said that Siddhartha had those uh, birthmarks. Uh, but we have evidence of statues made uh, of Jigden Sumgan during his lifetime uh, where uh, the Dharma Chakra is inscribed uh, in his palms and on the soles of his feet. I don't think we have evidence of other people doing this. So, so uh, it shows us, you know, uh, how strongly his disciples felt about him being an actual Buddha. Now, probably controversial, <laughs> but we don't need to get into the controversy. His inconceivable speech mandala points out that phenomena are primordially unborn and empty. It eliminates doubt and manifests for beings in accordance with their speech. So he has perfected his speech so that the teachings that he, give, he gave matches what the disciples need. Then, his inconceivable mind mandala is luminosity, the clear light of the mind, the mind being clear like light, like light, unchanging throughout past, present, and future. It is pure due to having completely abandoned the three kinds of obscurations. They are the afflictive obscurations, uh, the obscurations uh, of the habitual uh, propensities and karmic obscurations. Uh, these are the three types of obscurations. So he is free from all three. It manifests as unattached and unimpeded wisdom with regard to the past, present and future. His inconceivable ocean of qualities and effortless activities of body, speech and mind completely transcend the scope of the intellect. And so inconceivable, his qualities and activities. So these are sometimes called the five aspects, five dimensions of an awakened being is the exalted body, exalted form, exalted speech, exalted mind, exalted qualities and activities. These are the five. To this Lord of Dharma, Jigden Sumgan, the glorious protector of beings, I bow down. His words show that all phenomena arise in dependence, are primordially free from all mental elaboration and are non-dual, mind itself, and great luminosity. Flawlessly, with the sixty limbs of melodious speech and in accordance with the dispositions and mental capacities of those to be trained, these teachings eliminate ignorance, erroneous knowledge, and doubt. They open the lotus minds of the children of the victor, of the Buddha. In order to benefit myself and others, I will write down a fraction of these, my Lama's words of profound advice. And so this, this part uh, is a convention found in many of these texts, uh, which is the author's uh, expression of commitment uh, to write the text, to compose this text. Hmm? So Drakpa Jungne put this together uh, based on those teachings that his guru gave. 
And then there's another section where, once again, uh, there are praises of uh, Jigden Sumgun's qualities. Jigden Sumgun is essentially all Buddhas of the three times. He realized all phenomena of samsara and nirvana as mind itself primordially unborn emptiness and completely awakened to unsurpassable, perfectly complete Buddhahood. He thus vanquished in its entirety the Maras, which are self-clinging. So all Maras, all demons, are rooted in the demon of self-clinging, in which he has vanquished. Remaining constantly in meditative equipoise, he attained the great treasure of confident, unimpeded, and unattached eloquence on all spheres of phenomena throughout the three times. Thus, he excellently turned the wheel of Dharma, a savant who feared no opposition or question, perfectly endowed with the noble major and minor marks that stem from perfect and that stem from perfect abandonment and wisdom, uh, that arose from perfect abandonment and wisdom. Uh, perfect abandonment is talking about abandoning, uh, relinquishing uh, the afflictive emotions perfectly, completely. He delights the minds of sentient beings, and upon merely seeing him, their suffering and pain is eliminated. Upon merely hearing and thinking of him, beings attain the irreversible state. His inexhaustible wheel of ornaments of body, speech, and mind are consummate in the meditative absorption in which the two kinds of bodhicitta are inseparable. In the accumulation of merit and wisdom, in the grounds, in the perfections, and in the purity of aspiration. Effortlessly and unceasingly they manifest on the equal basis that are the dharmadhatu, the expanse of the sky, and the dispositions of beings, just like the moon's reflection in various vessels of water. They establish all beings in the state that is happiness, freedom from suffering, and unsurpassable awakening. In the state of the three times equality, they are effortlessly present, having attain the body of the perfection of purity, self-happiness, and permanence. At all times, they remain unchangeable and permanent. So the note here says, with regards to this, purity, self-happiness, and permanence, it says, this corresponds to verse 1, chapter 135 from the Uttara Tantra, the fruit is the perfection of the qualities of purity, self-happiness, and permanence. And so, and the locus classicus of these four is actually in the Mahayana Mahaparinirvana Sutra, uh, in which the highest continuum, Uttara Tantra, uh, is deriving this from. Uh, so these four things are the exact opposite of the usual, what we call, uh, unclean, not self, suffering, and impermanence. Huh? <laughs> All right? These are said to be the characteristics of compounded phenomena, of confused phenomena, uh, which is unclean, not self, suffering, huh? and impermanence. But here it says it's purity, self, happiness, and permanence meaning the opposite of those so this is the introduction section to these 30 teachings uh, i think uh, people have shared in there to say you know where you can get this book in the US is a little tricky <laughs> because it's published in Germany and uh, the distribution is a little more difficult. Mm, I think I seem to recall that uh, there is an ebook version of this from the publishers. Uh, so if somebody can determine if there is or there isn't, 
and if there is to provide a link even when you go to the link it's not very easy to find that ebook option <laughs> they really 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 want you to be really 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 sure that you want this precious text otherwise easy come easy go so it will take some effort to get a copy of this book but uh, don't give up so easily you know <laughs> <coughs> I want to just read uh, the beginning of the next section. Uh, just read at the beginning of the next section, the first teaching. Uh, it's such an amazing uh, kind of opening uh, to 30 days of teachings. Uh, we are going to take more than 30 days uh, to cover this 30 teachings. I'm just saying that uh, it's such an amazing opening to Jigden Sumgan's series of teachings that he gave for 30 days. So here it says, on the transmission lineage. And so the very first teaching he gave uh, in this set of 30 teachings, he begins by talking about lineage. He begins by talking about transmission. Uh, because this is such a hot topic, you know, such an important emphasis, especially in uh, the context of Vajrayana. And there's all this talk about lineage, 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 transmission, lineage, transmission, uh, and on and on and on. You know? So, here, let me read this. Thus the precious Lama Jikten Sumgun taught. The principle of the Dharma of all Tathagatas that appeared in the past will appear in the future and are now abiding in the reaches of the mirrored universes of the Dharma Dhatu is the same. In what way is it the same? And so he says, all Buddhists teach the same principle. So rhetorically, in what way is it the same? In general, it is the same with regard to the causality of the two kinds of bodhicitta. It says that principle can be summarized by bodhicitta in its two aspects. But what in particular is it that has been transmitted through the precious transmission lineage from the exalted one, great Vajadhara, the primordial Buddha, down to the present time? So we often chant, you know, Great Vajadara Dilipa Naropa Marpa Milarepa, right? And so on and so forth. And then all other uh, Vajrayana traditions in Tibet, they all begin with Vajadara or, you know, in a different name, Samantabhadra. But same, right? the primordial Buddha. And so we always say, oh, the lineage came from the primordial Buddha. And the primordial Buddha is the Vajrayana name for uh, Shakyamuni Buddha. So what, what came from there? What is it that is transmitted from great Vajradhara down to the present time? It isn't the path of methods such as the inner heat of Tummo and so forth. The path of methods is not limited to Tummo. But Tummo is, in a way, you could say, one of the most prized of all the methods within the path of methods. Uh, in fact, more generally, the path of methods includes uh, all the methods, just like the Achi Sang offering we, we, we did at the beginning of today. So here, Jitin Simkin says, it isn't the path of methods. Even uh, something like the heat of Tummo and so forth that is transmitted through this lineage. 
Well then, what is transmitted through this lineage? The two kinds of bodhicitta. Bodhicitta in its two aspects right, is the dharma that is transmitted and the reason why right, this is called a transmission. In order to understand what transmission means, we have to know what it is that is transmitted. For example, people who transport tea and salt or drive sheep and cattle are called tea traders, salt traders, and traders of butter, right? Like these examples, for the precious lineage too, we have to know what it is that is transmitted. And what is transmitted is bodhicitta in its two aspects. So we are, you know, transporters, we are traders, not of tea, not of butter, not of this method or that method per se, not of, you know, this practice, that practice. All those things, it's not that it doesn't happen, but all those are secondary. Secondary to the transmission of bodhicitta. Bodhicitta in its two aspects. This is what comes down from Vajadhara. <laughs> Everything else, you could say it also came from Vajadhara, but in a you know, less important way. So these, this statement here, you know, has really has, has, has I think, important implications eh, that we, we will maybe discuss more eh, starting tomorrow. So today, uh, we are going to end here, and we end uh, with the bodhicitta, uh, aspiration bodhicitta dedication. Chanju sem chorin poche ma ke pa nam ke gyuche ke pa nyam pa me pa ya gone Oh.